It's been a while since Houdini 19 has been released, but one of the coolest new additions to it is the layout lob. So this lob basically allows you to draw in geometry, like you can see here. So you have different assets you gather in an asset browser, and those assets you can either fill in with a brush, you can place it on objects. It's a really fun and intuitive way of working. And personally, I work a lot with mega scans. I really like the quality and the materials of them, and it's a really easy way of getting natural objects into your scene. So I thought like, how can I get mega scans into Solaris? So if you have the same question, then let's jump right into Houdini and convert these assets. So in Houdini, uh, the first thing we need to do is get into a stage context. And in order to work with these assets, we need to create components first. Those components we can store to the gallery. And then once we have it in the gallery, we can use the layout sub to draw them in our viewport. So let's start with getting a component built. And we just need to drop down a component builder for that. So this drops down a few nodes. The component geometry, as it says, it's the geometry that you put in. Then the material library and self-explanatory. This is where you drop your materials in. And then the component material basically connects these two together. And then the component output just saves this to disk. It's kind of like an export tool. So let's get started with loading a geometry in. So the first one I wanna show you is just with a single object. And later we'll get into variants as well, which are a very important concept in USD. So I use the OD tools for this. In the asset library, I've loaded in my mega scans and I could just drag in the female statue. I want to use material X for this one, but you can use any other material. And basically this gives us a few notes. So first of all, you don't have to use this. It just makes it easier. So if you don't use the OD tools, what you can just simply do is drop down a file note. Then you navigate to your Megascans folder and you select your FBX. Then you can delete your CD color. The material node we can delete because we don't need it as the component material is gonna sort that out for us. And then you just need to scale it down by a factor of 001, like usual in Houdini. And if we zoom in now, we can see here we have our model. I wanna disable the UV mode and you can see it's a pretty high resolution mesh which is great for final render output. But we have a few different outputs here. So the first one, the default one, this is if you render in Karma, so let's go up to stage. When we set it to Karma, that's what we'll get. The proxy one is for the Houdini GL preview. So this is a quick viewport mesh. And the sim proxy is in order to have collisions. So we'll get to it later, but in USD, it allows you to drop objects on top of each other and collide with one another. So for that, it uses the sim proxy, which needs to be really low resolution in order to have interactive feedback. So first thing first, let's drop this to the default node. And that's all we really need. But in order to get high quality assets, we wanna have a proxy mesh as well. So let's drop down a poly reduce. There's two ways to do the poly reduce. Um, first, you can just drop down the percentage to keep and as it says, is we'll just keep a certain percentage of whatever you put in. So if I said to 50, we have half of the polygons we would normally have. And there you can see, got reduced. But the thing I like to do is to set it continue reducing within quality tolerance. So for other assets you will create, they have a similar resolution to it. So it's quite nice to keep your whole gallery kind of like uniform. And now you can see we have a lot lower resolution. We could perhaps even set this to four. It's, it's kind of up to you. I don't, I don't really know how much it matters. I'm quite new to Solaris and USD as well. So this will require some trial and error to see what works, what works best. I did find I sometimes get slightly weird normals after this. So you could drop down a normal sub. But in this case, it just seems to make it worse. So this is again, this will be a process of testing and uh, trial and error. But that's our proxy mesh. And then for the sim proxy, we need to drop down in convex decomposition node. And we get that in from our poly reduce. And if I highlight now, we can see we have a very, very coarse mesh. But that's what we need for the simulation because you don't want that to be too high resolution. And that's all there is to it. If we go back to the stage now, we can see we have a component. And in this Houdini GL preview, uh, you can see it's quite coarse and now if we set this to comma, you can see we get the high resolution version back. So it's a really nice way of working, I think. 
And let's quickly save our project before we have any crashes. All right, so now everything is saved. The next thing to do is to get the materials up and running. Because I use the OD tools, I already have a material network here. And I can just simply copy and paste this material X subnetwork. So let's paste it in here. And now you can see the material instantly like links up. But for everyone who doesn't have the OT tools, let's jump right in. So you can drop down a material A, material X subnet. That's what you can drop down. And that will do the same. And then once you're in your subnetwork, you have a material X surface and you have an output. So let's replicate this. So in the subnet, let's drop down a material X standard surface. Delete this one. And the displacement, we can move down. And then get that in here. Let's replicate this. So maybe I'll keep this one there, keep that one there. Because I'm also still new to material X and comma. So I need to have a little, a little uh, cheat sheet, if you want to call it like that. So the first thing we need to drop down is a material X texture coordinate. So this basically passes on the textures, which is a vector two, not vector three. And then we have a material X image. So I think there's a few ways to do images in material X. I, I don't know which the best ones are yet, but you have a USD UV texture and you have an image and you have a tiled image. Image seems to work fine for me but maybe leave a comment down below if you think there's a better way to do this. And then in those materials, we drop down the files for mega scans. So let's copy this link so I don't have to go all the way there. And basically, yeah, here you find your albedo. So we drop that in and we link that to the base color. Then we have a roughness material X image. So maybe let's copy and paste this, get the texture coordinates in and then the roughness. And that would link to specular roughness. Then there is a normal map to X image. And this, oh, we have to set the roughness to float. Again, this is why I use the OD tools because uh, it's just so much easier. But anyway, so the normal map we set to color, I think. No, vector three. The normal map is vector three. And we have normal bump. Is that the same? Yes. We grab the normal bump, again, hook up the texture coordinates and then material X normal map. And that we put into R, which is down here. And then lastly, we have a material X displacement and we need to hook this up to our texture coordinates, which I can't find. Oh, in our displacement, we need to put in another image to X image. This would be a, we'll link that up to a texture coordinates as well. Let's double check. Oh, the normal is a tangent. Oh, we have that and a vector three. So let's make sure that's working. And then in the displacement, it's a flow and the out goes into the displacement and this goes into displacement output. We already had a displacement note here. Forgot about that, sorry. And the displacement values are usually quite low. So let's set it to 0 0.01. And the only thing we need to really fix now is range. So we can say material X range. And what we want to do is we want to set the out to minus 0 0.5 and the out high to 0 0.5. So basically it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 0.5 to from minus 0 0.5 to 5. So it's kind of centered. And now let's jump up and call this statue material, it doesn't really matter. You can delete the old one just to see if it works. And now if we open up comma, we'll see what we get. And it ain't pretty. Let's use XPU because it's a lot faster. And let's see what we messed up. So this is a float texture coordinates in, I think it's the problem is coming from the displacement. If we disconnect it, yeah, that's a lot better. So let's see if we don't remap it and see what we get. And then the restart the render. That actually seems to work a lot better. So maybe this is my bad. With some other tests I ran, it was better with the, with the range because everything just got just pushed out. But in this case, it seems to work without remapping the displacement. So again, this, this will be trial and error. But yeah, this is the way to set up your component. 
And if we open our, let's open this, and if we open our Solaris graph tree, what you can see is we have an asset. And if we highlight, make sure you don't have your tag pinned. I have that all the time and then I can't see the right info. But basically you get a component. And this component contains geo, and you see we have proxy geo, and we have a render geo. And then there's a material, and this the statue material, so we have all these things underneath. And then there's a sim proxy as well for simulation. So you can see we get a really nice, tidy, organized asset. And the only thing that's left to do is just to save it to disk. So you can just use the standard prefix here, so it will save it in your next to your hip. There's a USD asset. I want to generate a thumbnail as well, which will be important later if we open our asset gallery. So now if we hit plus here, new pane, we can open our layout asset gallery. And what we can do is, let's set it back to Houdini GL. And what we can do is go to the file and go to hip, USD, assets, component output of one, and open that. Oops. And then let's see see what we got out and now make sure you save it and uh, then we have component output one usd actually you want to name this a lot better i forgot to give it the right names and you can load in the thumbnail whoops and you need to give it a name so you can call it statue again please name your files better than me <laughs> in this tutorial and now you can see we have an asset in here you can tag it and give it names but that's a bit of the scope of this tutorial. But now you can drop down a layout salt and maybe drop down a grid so we quickly have a floor that we can like populate. And let you see, we have the floor. In the layout grid, we can drag in the statue, select it, and now we can just place it on the floor like this. So now we get that nice way of working and we can quickly populate our scene with statues and we can drop it on top of one another. So there you can see how important that simulation proxy is. Actually, I think this goes on the proxy geometry, not the simulation one. But you can move them with the use physics, but I haven't really tried it out yet. And you can fill the scene as well with assets. So you can use different tools for that. I like to use the lasso for it. And then you can see you fill in your scene with statues. And you can say, get the coverage up. You can scale them down a bit. You can scale them up a bit. Yeah, you can do a lot with it. But anyway, this is just to build the asset library. So now we covered the first part. Let's see how we do this with multiple assets. So let's collab this one again, drop down another component builder. And for this one, I wanna use the Thai Coral Pack. So again, in my OD tools, I go to 3D. And here's the Thai Beach Corals Pack. So let me drag this in and give it a second to load it up. I wanna use Material X again. So again, here we are in Houdini and here we have all these different models. So first, what we want to do is get rid of the material and then we want to check the path. So if we hook up a blast node, because as you can see, this is multiple models overlapping. You can see there's a model here. I could probably select it. No, it's just this one. We have multiple models and the way we can select that is we have these assets groups. So we have zero, zero, and we say delete non-selected. So this is one model. And then we have zero, one. This is another model. So yeah, just so you're aware. Let's start with zero, zero. So we do the same thing as that we did before, which is just a, a poly reduce and a convex something. I always forget the name. So let's link up this to our default. Then the poly reduce and Let's set this to a tolerance of 1E minus 0, 004, and then link it up to the proxy. So we have a very low resolution mesh, which is great. And another thing you might wanna do, as you can see these things are in the middle of the scene, but I quite like it to just have it on the floor. So let's be a bit more organized and place the blast before the out. And then we use the axis align as well before the out. And then all our models will nicely sit on the floor. Um, so again, let's do the default. So our poly reduce doesn't have to load. And do this, this, blast the node. And then in the match size node, you just set the justify Y to min. So this will now always sit on the floor. And then we can link this poly reduce up. So we have to load for a second again. And then all we have to do is link up the convex. 
for the simulation. And now you can see we have a super coarse uh, simulation mesh. And what we can do now is steal our material again from our X sub network, drop that in here. And the interesting thing, what I figured out is that these mega scans textures for all these different variations, they're all on the same texture. So if we swap this one out for say uh, zero one, you'll be able to see that the texture will still work. Let's jump up and now you see the texture still works. So we don't have to relink these textures. The only thing we got to do is copy these two, paste them, give it a second to load. We can keep the same material and in the component. So we can call this Thai Beach Coral Geo 1. Copy this, paste it, call it 2. So this one, let's set it to 0, 0. And now what we do is we plug in this component geometry variants. So here we have one, here we have two. So now we get all these different variants. And the thing we have to do is in our component output, we need to enable variant layers. And here we have the different variants. And what we can say as well is set a default variant. So in the geometry, we can say maybe Geo1 is the best one and the material can be leave blank because they use the same materials. And you can see this works. So what you can do now is maybe name this. <laughs> let's see what we get our component output to. So let's call this Thai beach corals. And this is fine for now. Again, you can name this a bit better if you want to. It's important to keep an eye on your uh, scene graph tree to see what you're actually creating. And what we do now is we can save. First, let's create a gallery thumbnail. All right. So thumbnail, generate thumbnail, and then save this to disk. Give it a second to export. And now again, let's drop down a grid. Here we go. Let's drop down a layout. And let's pull up our asset gallery. So for this one, I'm going to add an asset directory and go up. I'm going to select the Thai Beach Code. OK. And this one automatically imports all the models in a folder and their thumbnails as well. So it's a lot easier to do this way. You don't have to do everything manually. Uh, you need to give it a bit of time in order to do so. But if you export a lot of assets in one go, then it's actually a really nice way to do it like this. And now you can see we have our different assets. So let's drop this in here and select these. So the cool thing about this is that it's one USD material, but it has different variants. So it's a really neat way, I think, of organizing it. And the cool thing what it allows you to do is now when you place it, you can just scroll with your middle mouse button and you can select between the different models. So this makes it even more fun to populate your scene. And you can use the same kind of uh, brushes with this. Again, you can use a lasso and kind of draw in all these different elements. And yeah, it's just a fun way of working. Uh, so just wanted to show you how you, you can do this with mega scans and um, hopefully it's useful to you. I personally find it a really nice way of working with these tools. So please let me know in the comments if you think the same. And I'm going to do a couple of more tutorials on Solaris because I'm kind of getting into it. I'm starting to like it. So if you want more of this content, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.